All right, uh, greetings family. This is Bomani Tayemba, and welcome to our Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community in Ghana public meeting to share information and give updates and also let everyone know that uh, we have lots available still in phase one for anyone who want to get started uh, building in the community. But uh, more important, I want to make sure that we just go over a quick overview of what we've been going over the last uh, 18 months as far as just all of the details on the website. That way anyone that's interested could be completely clear and then we can get them a getting started email uh, to get all of the information back to us so we can just uh, get everything uh, cleared and uh, get you started. That way you, do, you have no delays. Some people are more prepared to move faster than others. But what we always want to let everyone know as far as that process that uh, we started was literally uh, just to get here to where we can just assist anyone who's ready to make a move or get anything uh, that they need in place. Uh, so that's what uh, we're going to talk about as far as the foundation and to that part and then beyond. Family, uh, I'm the uh, group organizer and also the administrator. What I've created on the uh, website is all the administrative documents. So. The website is africaforthefricans.org. And once you're on the website, whether from your phone or from your computer or any other device, the main thing is just to go down the main menu. The main menu features uh, the first um, link on there is Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community in Ghana. Uh, so once you click on it, it will open up, and you're going to see 12 different articles. These article breakdowns are a combination of two different files. Uh, one file is the bylaw file, and then all the other documents uh, combined are in the community overview. And these are two files that you get in a, a getting started email. And once you get it in a getting started email, it's part of this information that we want you to read and then uh, sign to make sure that you're clear. Uh, and that's part of the, the process of joining the uh, community. That way, we have everyone that's clear on a certain process uh, to make everything simple and organized uh, and, and less as confusion as possible. And uh, these are long documents, so I'm not going to read through all of it. I'm just going to give this a quick overview of each document. But the main thing we want everyone to understand is that uh, what you do when you get the uh, email, uh, they'll come in a PDF attachment, and some may be JPEG. Just download all the attachments and look through all of the files in detail. It may seem like a lot of information, but uh, what you want to do before you make any of these decisions is to make sure that you're clear 100% on everything before you pay into uh, you know, the investment. Because it does have, you know, once you uh, start what we're doing, uh, we're getting things rolling. Uh, we're paying right now for the 50 acres of land because the 15 acres has been paid in full since uh, August of last year. Uh, so uh, all new payments is working towards paying for phase two. and. Um, once we get that land paid for, we get access to doing all the other necessary work. But right now, we've gotten everything done as far as all of the preliminaries. Um, as far as the 50 acres of uh, plan of land or land indenture, uh, then we have uh, the land search as Claire. And uh, right now, we have um, the chief has uh, been paid a certain uh, percentage of a deposit. And then we have also uh, just paid our legal and our consultant uh, to just basically set the foundation up. So those things are just uh, in process. And um, you know, last time it took us about six months to just close everything out. So um, that's uh, the latest of the investment uh, as the last you know, 10 plots uh, is you know, basically just almost gone. You do have five more plots available. Excuse me, uh, six more plots available. And that's what um, I sent in the email as far as uh, the conference call newsletter which goes through all of the details of the, um, the project itself. That's another way to send information out. And as a matter of fact, before I get started with this, I'll just click on it. For those that's on the email list, it would just say, uh, Land for Sale in Ghana, conference call Sunday, February 28, 7 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time, Black Star Pan-African Community. So if you receive that email, you know, you're on the uh, newsletter. You can also check your uh, junk mail. But once uh, uh, you ask me to just add, send the information, that's the list I put you on so you can get the uh, email. 
And so the foundation of this, uh, which I'm not going to talk about much, but this is what I always like to just get everyone. This is actually what we talked about last time. Uh, we just went through the newsletter and just show everybody what all the links and all the details are as we just build a level of uh, documentation. Once you click on the link from the main menu, uh, let me just read through the 12 articles. Uh, we're just going to go through them briefly. Introduction, uh, Site Map, Land Survey, and GPS uh, Location, Lands Commission Search, uh, Prime Objective, Business Opportunities, Building and Buying Homes, Membership Rules and Code of Conduct, Membership Application, Pictures and Videos, Committees, Bylaws, and Getting Started. Uh, so those, those are the breakdown of the different uh, articles on the uh, website. And they just give you a nice uh, clean view of uh, text documentation clear. And then also just relative photos along with uh, everything that we're talking about. All right, so when you click on the uh, introduction of the Black Star uh, Pan-African Community, what you're going to see is us talking about that we're just looking to organize a Pan-African group mindset of uh, brothers and sisters from the African diaspora that want to come together as far as uh, nation building, but also more so cooperative economics. Uh, the investment is basically contributing to others' investment, and that's how you're paying for land, that's how you're getting all the work done. And what we have done is just showed over a period of time from the land that's being raw, where we just walking all through the, the raw land, to where the land is being cleared, to where the land is now just being uh, uh, laid out a few months ago. Now the land is being developed as far as people st starting to build. So all of this is just that process that we're just uh, connecting everyone into, just explaining this is what we're looking to do. Uh, so some of the things that uh, you see in the text are just things that we have written uh, from the beginning that was early summer of 2019. Yeah. So that's um, the main thing, and this is based on my experience of traveling to Africa. Uh, coming up March will be 17 years, and it's been in Ghana uh, for the last uh, 14 years, uh, this uh, December that just came. Yeah. And, and the vision of looking to build an energy where we can just have a, a land that we can just kind of put ourselves in a situation where we can just feel more you know, focused in Africa where we just have certain things in place already. That way we can just get to the work that we're looking to get. Most of the time you find people looking to repatriate or repatriate or return to the ancestral land. And what they run into is a situation where they scramble for months upon months to years upon years. And then it's, you know, and not getting where you need to get to, to the point where you just, you know, you just give up or go back. But once you just connect and we just build this uh, community, you know, it's building a way where, you know, you're building your investment to where you can just have all of the, the things that you need in place to assist you all the way. That's what, um, you know, we talk about when we just explain the reading the bylaws and overviews is one of the things that has to be clear because if you have a whole lot of people on the same team as far as clear on a specific vision, you know, the more or the quicker you can kind of build this uh, progress. So again, family, we started in September of uh, 2019. And from there, we have visited Ghana twice, December 2019 and December 2020. Once you click on the first link, uh, Introduction of um, Black Star Pan-African Community, you're going to see the uh, Business and Corporation. Uh, so that's one of the, uh, the, uh, one of the documentation that's on the uh, website, uh, which showcase 100% of the documentation as far as just uh, being able to just build this uh, community from the ground up. So that's one thing I always just explain to everyone uh, before they even talk to me or if they don't want to talk with me directly and they just want to look at everything. They can just use this process. So the next thing is the uh, site map, land survey, and GPS location. So I have it set up where we have two different uh, full view of the uh, site map as far as this, uh, the, uh, the, the raw scale layout, and that's your plan of land indenture. And what I'm doing is just avoid clicking on this, all of these uh, links just to just, uh, save our time. Uh, and you can click on it, um, and it's all good since you're in mute all mode. All right. And GPS location for those who just want to see exactly where everything is on. So that's uh, one of the, the main articles of the uh, information, the exact location. Uh, both surveys for the 15 and the 50 acres, um, which is uh, completed. Now the next one is the land commission search. 
So both 15 and 50 acres land commission search is clear. Uh, th and those are the documentation that you can click on and read and have access to. And also something that I can send uh, via email. I just take a quick uh, email um, request and I'll just forward it to you. A lot of times I just cut back uh, certain, certain emails, but, but uh, once you, you're on the email list, usually I'll just send you those documents and things like that and any questions you have uh, and so on. But those are the two main things, the uh, land indenture and the land commission search. So prime objective of the uh, community uh, is just us uh, working together to build a pan-African repatriation group of people who focus on uh, straight up this pan-Africanism, straight African nation building, and it's more so this community and this people of the same like minds. So those are things that I w want you to click on, open, and read through. That way you just read the clear uh, terminology so nothing is misinterpreted, and it's just right there in the written word as far as this prime objectives and who is allowed and who is not allowed. Business opportunities. Uh, the goal is to just turn this into a business enterprise as, at the highest level. Uh, next week uh, when we have our group meeting, I'll be talking about these things. Um, have a strategic comprehensive plan for developing Black South Pan-African communities. So since we started this, been working on all kind of key strategies just to keep things uh, focused and uh, keep things organized. Uh, so uh, regardless of whatever pandemic or pandemic or whatever is going on, we're literally just working on putting everything in place. So that's why everything is done. The next thing is uh, business and buying homes. So uh, part of the uh, getting started process is what we're going to explain more so in that. But um, you know, for those people who just want to build their homes to be a part of the community, build your homes also for this, uh, to, to share it with future business of people because we're looking to bring more and more people in the community and you know, eventually some people may not always want to build a fresh house. So if someone wants to invest and build that house and so on and you know, try, uh, you know, it's, and maybe just resell it to someone else and things like that. It's a lot of flexible options and that's what uh, these articles are to just give you a clear idea that the goal is to put in as much flexibility and clarity as possible. That way, you're not limited to just connecting uh, with this. You know, so, uh, and, and also, you know, if, you know, if you're doing those things, it's kind of resetting it back to like-minded people. Uh, so everything is still uh, membership and being a part of community. Uh, also, um, as far as this um, uh, building homes, once the 50 acres get um, uh, we'll get closer to this, being able to get access to it, to it further to this, get things clear and once we just receive enough payments on it because that's what we're doing. We're making payments on land as a, you know, as an investment to where you get access to that plot just like people did in phase one and now they have access to it to build on their land. Uh, is this, this is a little bit more land and it could be as quicker or it also could be as longer. This depends on uh, who's looking at it and how clear they are and what's going on and things like that. So um, that's why it's important to make sure you just read through everything and write down as much documentation, questions as possible while you look through these things. Our membership rules, codes, and conduct, so those are part of the, the same situation we're talking about. Just you have to be clear on, on those things because that, that's what bounds us as a common group of people. And so the membership application is just a sample. Uh, once you send an email to me, I'll just um, I'll send you the getting started email and you have a PDF version and also a Word a document uh, version of the application to where you can do uh, electronic signature um, and which is this, the request of this to send everything in via email, via JPEG or PDF. Uh, send everything, I mean uh, electronic um, and uh, if you just need to mail it in, uh, that's uh, fine, uh, but uh, everything needs to be sent in unless you literally can't uh, get it uh, sent that way. So for those who are not familiar with using scanners and things like that and you have to go to the office store or they need to call me and I'll walk them through it, one if they have it at home, but if they don't, the best thing to just do is go to take all your documents to office store and get it scanned and then just have them scan email to yourself and also myself. And we're going to tell you exactly what uh, else to submit uh, as we go down to getting started. Uh, pictures and videos. Let me actually open up a YouTube page. 
So what family, what I've done is um, when you click on that link, let's say uh, pictures and videos of Black Star Pan African Community, it's going to give you the uh, the public link. Um, and for those of members, you you just get access to the private link uh, for this you know, private uh, conference call. But the main thing is uh, the public video covers a whole lot of documentation. So I'm going to go to um, two page, which is uh, youtube.com forward slash Bomani 2007, and uh, that's the actual main uh, YouTube page. But uh, the link does give you a specific uh, playlist. Uh, so once you're on that YouTube page, uh, what you do is uh, scroll down, and then you'll see uh, Black Star Repatriation and Pan African Community in Ghana Development uh, Progress. So once again, that's uh, once you're on our website, Africa for Africans.org and you click on Black Star Repatriation and Pan-African Community, uh, you scroll down to where it says Pictures and Videos of Black Star Pan-African Community, and then that gives you all of the Facebook uh, public group page, which you can just um, do a friend request, and also it gives you the public YouTube videos, and that's all of the highlights conference call, Us in the Country, which is Ghana, uh, tour December 2019 and 2020, and then this highlights of the land clearing, and let's give you a full like documented version of this what we're talking about. And the, the last set of things that was done was the uh, land commission, which is uh, the chief for libation and doing blood sacrifice to commission the land, uh, which now once it was cleared about two months ago, now it's just time for people to start building. So that's all this documentation give you give you the, the photo and also video documentation. So what you're looking at is uh, 55 videos, and that's from September 2019 to the last one was updated uh, February 5th, uh, 2021. And what this does, it covers this, uh, this in detail scope. It's a lot of information, but also, you know, is when you're ready to make a serious decision like that and you're ready to just hit the ground running, uh, you want to make sure that all the things are clear. That way you're running in the right direction. Because this is a, this is a teamwork, this is organization, this is this moving past, talk, and people just slowing things down. Because you know, I tell everyone that uh, when you build these kind of operations, you always have people, people in, and, and negative energy consistently trying to set you back. But one thing that we have done is just keep moving forward and keep moving forward and progressing. Uh, so uh, sometimes we get a little impatient when these things work, but... Um, when you work in certain process in Ghana and just outside of your comfort zone, which you're used to working, you gotta go through everything in, in detail and make sure everything is good. It, it takes work, it takes time, and that's what you've seen. Even the relationship building. Um, there's a, a video also right there on the, the public group page that talks about um, a public bathroom that was commissioned by group members. Uh, that's December 2020 tour, um, and then also there's a video of Rafiki Satellite Village School and Orphanage. In Jahazi, that's our, our group in December 2020 going there to the support and connecting with the um, you know, the children in the community as far as donations and school supplies. Uh, we also sh uh, show a video at the business conference uh, where we have the builders talking, the, the citizenship conference, uh, and us at the Chief's Palace, uh, which looks a whole different from December 2019. Uh, that's part of us paying for the land, investing in, in the land versus going begging and asking for free land and things like that. So. Um, all those, you know, being able to just organize yourself strong, uh, you know, in corporate ec economics and just working together with so many of us, uh, you know, you're able to just build, you know, a stronger bridge across uh, where it doesn't have to be a situation where you, you, you're coming from this begging and weakness, you're coming from strength as being a bu business person, an investor, someone who respect the needs of the, the community and say, hey, I want to come and be a part of this, uh, you know, the school, the orphanage, come a part of uh, investing in the chief's palace, investing in the town, investing in the operation, being a part of this, opening yourself to just get access to a good price land and a community. Uh, so those are the documentation that you're going to see. And for the most part, it, uh, it's either going to connect with some people or it's not going to connect with them. And you know, it's um, up to everyone to just make those decisions. What, what we just try to do and what I'm available 24-7 throughout the week, uh, literally uh, this is just to talk uh, for clarity about who want to do this and get this thing rolling that way. 
we just take advantage of opportunity and make progress uh, in Africa versus a lot of times we just want to do all these things, but then not enough of a sacrifice to make it organized. Uh, me and my entire um, connection, administrative staff and people that I've connected with on all levels as far as attorney, a chief consultant, a surveyor, uh, uh, business people, uh, shippers, builders. You know, it's hard to just coordinate all of that, but that's what we have done. It's taken a long time, but that's the process that needs to just be in place uh, for, you know, for some of us to make the move. Uh, so that's what we're building here, and it's just been a nice, smooth experience. And the mindset also have to be, you know, keep moving forward because, you know, this whole COVID-19 drama happening, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, you know the devil is going to just keep on working hard, so you just got to just be tactical and sharp and just be just up and just work at it, you know, problem, solution, certain men mentality. Uh, so, uh, nevertheless, family, um, this, you know, this is kind of like a celebration of this happiness that uh, to all of that, uh, we, you know, we finally arrived to where we can, you know, get this done and get it done efficiently. And we have covered all single, all of this, every way, and we have covered all of our, you know, angles and things like that. And I've just uh, put it, uh, something uh, strong in place to where we don't have to worry about procrastination and bureaucracy. The key to us uh, really building this operation is going to be committees. And this is where we talk about the hard work, which is not really hard work. Uh, what you're doing is you're in a group of people in the different committees. And what I'm going to do is just go to the overview and uh, read through a few different committees. All right. Uh, business and professional affairs, safety, security, and surveillance education, cultural, and social affairs, sustainable energy and utilities, medical and wellness, planning and development, waste management and recycle, agricultural and livestock, bylaws and homeowners affair. So those are the 10 committees, and those are the things that we talk about as far as work has to be done. Because now you're building a community and things like that. One of the things I did mention to everyone on some of my first set of videos that the best thing I could do personally, uh, th that's because we have been dealing with for years of just trying to work with other groups of people, and they just weren't putting the, the, the work in. The work is doing the business administrative work, the organization work. So basically just learn from their failures and basically, you know, been studying that whole process and then hired an attorney. And we just work together to just put everything in place. Uh, so that's what you have here, um, and now we're at the point where we have to build a community, community so we're going to be thinking about business part, community development, livestock, agriculture, maintenance, and so on. So that's so 100% of the things that we need to do and focus on is basically laid out in the committees. Uh, so that's what you'll see on the, the newsletter that gets sent out uh, if you're on the uh, email list, and it just, uh, it's also the same thing that uh, you can access right there on the website, it will say Committees for Black Star Pan-African Community. Uh, so those are the things that just we want everybody to be clear on. And you know, some people just honestly are saying, just do your best. And then some people more, may be more tied up than other people. So you know, it's understandable. It's not trying to dictate that people say, you got to do this, you got to do this. It's not, it's not that. Uh, but all, all of us that just honestly take the layback role, we never also progress. So you know what I'm saying? It's kind of looking at th th this situation in, a different, you know, in different ways. And um, the only thing I can just focus on is just keep them moving forward and things like that. I have people who have given their heart and soul in and, and say they're going to do this and do that and things like that, and they just disappear off the map. And it's just it's what it is. It's, you know, it's like, you know, it's like warfare. You're going to have casualties and things like that. You know, but those of us that are dedicated to, to doing the work, I uh, mean, you just got to just, you know, never give up on your dreams and stick to this that we can come together, build a community, build a future in Africa, and make it work, and us being about us, uh, you know, what we're about. So the year and a half was to go to and setting up all of those things, and to, you know, the last set of things, which, which was going to be the greatest challenge, uh, which was to get, a, get a, a group of builders that we've been talking to, been interviewing, as far as myself, um, you know, the organizer, uh, and then also Kwabena, our consultant. Uh, so that's a, and so, we just organized certain things where we interview on phone and we met up. So part of one of the uh, part of the actual business and investment conference that we did in Ghana, uh, two set of builders uh, showed up there, and we're going to work certain process to where we just interact with other set of builders. 
And once you're doing this business, building a strong business relationship and you're letting the builders know that, you know, you're looking to other different people we have connect with because uh, a lot of times it's just based on referrals and connections. That's the world we just live in and the world that I definitely uh, flow with as far as just holding people accountable at every single angle uh, to make sure everybody is on point and focused 100% in, in the direction of us building this community for brothers and sisters from the DAF. So making sure that we give them all the help and making sure that we leverage with them as far as us prices and things like that and put it in a situation where we can be as reasonable as possible because uh, when you look there in Ghana and you see land prices in Accra and you see the cost of houses and things like that, it's consistent like this price increase in drama. So those are the, the things that we just honestly just uh, try to make sure that um, we just get in place. And family, so we're still on the website, and I'm going through the last uh, article. And the last article is getting started, land costs, requirements, refund policy. And so those are like in detail uh, information. So what I'm going to do is just click on that link. And then once I uh, go through that, I'm going to open things up for questions. All right, so once you click on that link, uh, you see myself, Dira Kwabna, the chief and the attorney, and that's the original survey, but um, there's a new person, but I haven't been able to take a new picture. But that's uh, the foundation of how everything was uh, set up as far as everyone who worked on getting the project and the foundation are set up. Land costs, uh, what we have done is break it down into the core land cost of 2500 and then the administrative cost of 500 uh, So the administrative cost is a connection of things that were worked out to where if we build more and more people in the group, it will take care of this instead of us going out, getting a piece of land and having to pay, uh, turning a few other people a few thousand dollars on top of the land, and that cost does add up. Uh, we, we've been able to just to work out a sequence like this. All right, uh, so uh, it takes care of um, uh, this will be uh, added to the process, uh, all paperwork, transfer payments, legal land documents, as far as just getting things organized and set up, um, customer service, technical support, management overall, startup. An administrative team has been set up to just take care of all the entire process to get you started on being a part of the uh, repatriation community. The clearing of the land, set up and installing of the pillars with your name on it is also included in the administrative costs. So, you know, let me just put a list of everything that you can think about um, outside of the land cost. That way you're limited, as, as, uh, that way you're clear about a, a specific cost versus having to pay more and more money because when you hear certain things, you just start hearing people, people telling people, I have to pay for this, I have to pay for that. So doing group economics, you just kind of reduce the cost of what people pay to just a certain percentage. And that covers us having kind of like consistent staff and consistent of people working on the whole process throughout the year. Uh, so that's one of the things that I saw in the flaw, the, the people that I've, that I've met and I connected with that was doing uh, these kind of business. Uh, so that's what we have worked out. So you just, you know, it is, you just, you know, experience uh, is it, you just learn and experience things and just come up with unique ways to make uh, these things work. There's no book and no direction or no anything out there that tells you how to build repatriation and investment in Africa and make it work for yourself uh, based on a growing up uh, floor of uh, corporate economics and things like that. So you just have to just create your own process. Uh, so that's what we have done. All right, uh, so the other cost outside of that um, is the individual land survey for $350 and then the uh, individual registration for $700. So and those are also part of the uh, cost that goes towards the uh, groups of registration. So the registration of the land is two parts, it's the group and also the uh, community itself. Uh, so those things are just broken up. So our, what we did was we negotiated with a surveyor for that price as far as just a whole lot of land that needs to be surveyed and just, you know, kind of put him in a situation where he's working with us throughout the year and because we're consistently getting plots surveyed. Uh, so that was able to reduce the price of that. And then the registration is the same thing too, just have your attorney just uh, talk with the uh, 
the group that's managing the registration at the Lands Commission and let them know that we're just working a certain process to where we're trying to lower the price of our group, but if, if we give them consistent <laughs> group business, they'll just give us a certain price. And honestly, that's how people like myself think, and that's how I've done everything in business. I just I talk directly with the source of who I need to talk with in business and then negotiate a deal and just base everything on contract and business agreement. And that's the same thing as far as this process, as far as the people who are connected into this process. We've made it clear to where you can just, you know, you can uh, just get access to what you need and just uh, get going without any kind of thing based on just what we agree on, based on you uh, reading and signing off on the community overview. And this is actually the bottom part of the community overview uh, that we just want everyone to read uh, and don't just, <laughs> where you just open a document and read the first few letters. <laughs> the most important thing, and it's not a you know, fine print, it's like it's on the page and it's, it, it will show a nine page and you got to go all the way down to the bottom because it covers all the things that you should want to process before you start investing, looking to live, build, repatriate, or be a part of anything in Africa or anything outside of anywhere or invest in anything or just anything you can think of, and that's what we've just worked on for the last year and a half, just going through this and uh, editing it and clearing it up that way. The information is clear in your mind. That way you make the decision to, because one thing is when you're not fully into something, you, you know, sometimes you could just be, a, you know, you can cripple it or set yourself back, and more so set yourself back because we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, but uh, be clear on what you're doing. That way we, you know, we can come together as a strength and things like that, and then you don't lose any of your investment because we have the policy at the below, and that's one thing I'm always telling everyone, we talk about every single last thing, nothing is like hidden from anything, and the cancellation policy is right there in clear reading. Once you get a community overview, it will have the updated cancellation and refund policy and those things, and you just read through it, and if you agree with it, sign it, and let's move forward. If not, then I do understand, and you know, we all have to just do what we need to do as far as building what we need to build, but we have to also build a situation where we're not liable and caught up into certain things based on people doing certain things. So we have to cover ourselves, and this is what covers ourselves. It covers everything that we've talked about as far as how, why, and what we're doing to build this community and, and how we have laid it out and structured it. Uh, so it will just take me another two hours to just go through everything and find details and everything. But that's the purpose of uh, the read and sign for that and the bylaws and also for uh, just uh, your application in general. Uh, we could be clear about, you know, what we're building together and just, you know, make sure we have the best of our people to focus on repatriation and investing in Africa. So that is it, family. So I'm going to click back on the Black Star link, and that is going to load back up uh, the main menu with all of this of the documentation. And uh, before I do that, the thing I do have to this, uh, go over beyond those documents, also this, there's a few other documents, and they're just, that's what we'll have in the, uh, the email that uh, if, you, if you're just fresh to the information, we'll just give you an email and it'll give you sample documentation. Uh, so certain things that didn't load on you as far as any sample documentation, but that's more so where we'll just send you an email on just all of the things that you need as far as. I'm, I'm good at just, you know, I'm trying to always just make sure we have examples of everything that we clear. So if you're filling out a, a passport email that uh, we send you, we usually have a sample application, uh, as simple or difficult as that may sound, but uh, this application is to give you an idea how it's filled out. So that's the goal on everything here on, as far as on the website and things. It's just organized to just give you the fullest clarity. And if you see something that's not clear, um, but cause some, some things, you know, would have to be just more in a private conversation. Um, but, but this is just public and this is probably way too much information, but this is just to be honest and clear with people because we need to make sure that we just, uh, you know, it's like we feel like we're already just behind in this uh, movement of us uh, working together to build different uh, investment in Africa because other people have already been, you know, in the um, you know, in the gates already. So as they, you know, as they're moving around, they're more set up. So we can even have a continent of Africa that's uh, for for the African people that's built by us as a people. We could just let the Chinese and the Indians and other people just come into the continent and build what they need to build for you and everything. So we live in a sustainable world, so, you know, you need all that, you know, fancy technology you need to just be about developing and investing and creating this fresh, great opportunities and so on. So this is just a good opportunity to do that, and um, the good thing is, 
I have a group of 60 people with us so far, and the goal is to keep on adding more. Um, as phase two, it will be about 120 lots uh, ready. I'm going to be working on this, the, 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 the site um, layout and everything, trying to position everything where it needs to be positioned as I build this uh, development plan. And it's no different from what I've done in phase one. All of that is just what I've created and set up, uh, survey it, uh, set everything up as far as um, the legal layout of the land and the, the, since he's on the ground and things like that. So that's what we do. We just create everything in a rough uh, vision uh, version and then this kind of this, this you know, set up to where it's just nice and clear. So phase two is going to be incredible. Uh, and, and it's uh, going to be all the different things that we don't have in phase one. So that's... Uh, let me actually cover that. I want to say that it's, and that is what's covered in the community overview and under the uh, site map. And these things are usually, um, um, or always updated as I just, every few months I just go through everything. So family, um, I'm going to unmute everyone. It's star six to unmute yourself. And if you have any questions, uh, just give your name, where you're calling from, and your question. This is Charles Lohman. Can I ask a question? Uh, go ahead, Charles. I can hear loud and clear. Okay, wonderful. Um, I noticed the way the uh, the way the first uh, 15 acres is laid out, and there's two questions I have. Number one is at the entrance. It shows a road out, outside of the development. I'm not talking about the one on the inside, but the one outside. What road is that? That connects you to the road going to the town. Okay, all right. That, that's question number one. Question number two is um, the way the the way the project is laid out. I noticed that the that the um, plot along the perimeter, you know, are, rectang are rectangular plots. I was wondering, are those commercial plots? No, all of the or plots phase are one is our residential plot outside of the park, the business, and community center. So the numbers marking 1 to 50 is all residential. And that's what we do. We we'll continue on to phase 2. We we'll just mark the, the residential plots with numbers, and then the business plots with just, um, you know, most of the name of the business. All right, thank you. I appreciate, I appreciate you guys accepting me. Absolutely. Uh, let's do this. Um, Africa has been calling. Yes. All right, excellent. So I'll go ahead and meet you back. All right, greetings, family. Our next person, uh, can you give your name and where you call him from? All right, Chaz or Derek, anyone on the line that would like to share some information on our recording call? Hi, Bhavani. Uh, yes, go ahead. Uh, give your name. Where you call him Hi, from? this is Valerie Jessica Brown, and I'm here in Metro Atlanta, in Locust Grove, to be exact. And I've been following you, very interested. Thank you for submit, sending me the uh, email information, and I've been going through it thoroughly. So my question is um, in regards to, uh, it mentioned on the website about a price increase as of March 1st. Is that still uh, in effect? Or uh, Yes, uh, for, th for those who uh, talk to later on, um, and just giving everybody updates, so for those who have been connecting with, like, you know, like yourself, we're speaking right now, uh, this would, would just connect you, lock you in with whatever is existing at that time, and not so much. And that won't probably, probably won't get around to even changing it until maybe another month or two months. But uh, it's just to let people know it's going up because we're spending a lot on the land, and it's what it is. Land is just appreciating as you develop it more and put more infrastructure, more things in place. Okay. That was one, and, uh, and but initially the only thing I would need to do is just submit the application and the the paperwork that's listed for getting started. Is that correct? Uh, absolutely, and that definitely holds you in a deposit. Uh, holds you even more, especially if you want to get one of those lots that's available. We can hold it for everyone for maybe about uh, uh, two weeks, um, and we have a few people that uh, it's, they're going to end up uh, uh, commit to the, the line that they committed to uh, as far as the plots they committed to, or they have to release it. Uh, so for those who are looking to make a move, they may not see lots available, but lots uh, may be available. So what we do is just put everyone in a, a kind of standby sheet, a stand, standby list, and it's based on when application and things like that is submitted, and definitely so when you know, when payment is already put out. And 
So we even uh, offered everyone that's in our phase two, if they wanted to move to any of the plots in phase one, it was up to them. Uh, so they, they was given the first chan chance, and it's been you know, a few weeks now, so uh, what we have available is that and a few more. So uh, this, you, know, you can, and then you and I can communicate um, uh, via email, and I can actually talk with you if you want to send me information if I don't have it already, or, or text me it, and then we can just go through everything to make sure everything is clear and just uh, get you set up. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, excellent. Uh, you're welcome. All right. Greetings, Sam. Your line is open. Hey. So, hi. I am Shelly. I'm one of the newer uh, members to the Pan-African community known as Black Star in Gahazi, Ghana. And um, I kind of followed Africa for the Africans online for about a year. Um, especially during COVID because I knew I was going to travel and um, I probably read every uh, article and probably not as closely as I should have but I know I saw most of the videos and was pretty convinced that it was what I wanted to do but I did just uh, travel with Africa for the Africans. I did the journey of a lifetime and if you have not done it I strongly recommend it. It is not a tour people. It is not a tour. It truly is a journey. Uh, you will discover yourself and uh, connect with your your roots and your ancestors on a level that you know I don't I don't even know how to put that into words. But um, I did stay beyond the journey uh, for another two and a half weeks. Uh, quite a number of us stayed behind and did our own kind of recognizance of trying to find out things, everything from the banking system to uh, transportation to shipping to whatever but all of us convinced that we were returning to Ghana. Um, one of the highlights for me of attending the journey was also being able to be part of the groundbreaking ceremony um, for the community in Gahazi with, um, with, with Nana there and um, wow that was very powerful to, to have that prayer and to have the goat that was sacrificed ah, um, and libation poured um, and even before that being able to uh, actually hear from him um, about his goals, his objectives, his desire for what he wants to see on his land, um, meeting with uh, Leonard and uh, Carmen who have built, done a, a uh, public restroom construction right there um, even before breaking ground um, which to me is just like the most phenomenal thing to be able to give even before you're there. Um, if you're considering this community, I think for me I do things like um, vision boards and I was looking at my vision board from last year and one of them said your dream de deserves a village. If you are dreaming about Ghana and your dream deserves a village, you should seriously consider this as your village. Um, the people that I have met uh, who will be there, the, there's so much diversity in who we are as, as individuals up there. Um, age diversity, background diversity, educational diversity, coming, you know, coming from different walks of life, but I think all of us being part of that historically unique group known as the uh, descendants of the African uh, tr uh, transatlantic slave trade. So uh, we all share that in common. And uh, yeah, I will be there in the, I'm leaving here the end of April. I'm so glad to see that my friend Lisa is on this call. Hey, Lisa. Um, and I know that I will be there for a stretch of time uh, while I get my residency. Um, possibly even start building on my own um, but that is going to be my home and I'm getting ready to take the second step. I thought I would do it in December of this year but I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. COVID is still here. It has you know made it very difficult to uh, just even survive let alone thrive um, and it's just time. I don't know. For me it's time. And I'm happy to answer any question anybody has, especially ladies, if you're getting ready to travel, listen, 
no matter what Bamani tells you, you're going to pack too much because he told us, don't take this, don't do that, don't do the other, and all of us took too much. So if, you, if you're getting ready to travel with him, pack your suitcase and then cut it in half and you'll be good. Excellent, uh, Shelly. Um, anyone, uh, any questions for Shelly? All right, so while we wait for a question, um, what I'll say is, um, uh, why, do you, why are you ready to move so quick? Uh, you probably just answered that question also. What was uh, that? Why do you move so quick? Well, you, you just got, got to Ghana uh, December 2020. Yeah. So and you made a, a clear decision to move like right now. Absolutely. So I had already made the decision to move. 90% um, of the decision was made before I even went to Ghana. I just wanted to know if it was where I needed to be. And as soon as I was, it didn't take long to realize, yes, this is the place for me. When I got back to the United States, then my plan was to work and um, prepare and go again in December and do like a three to six month stay to get the um, residency and then come back to the United States and pack up and go. Well, that's a lot of back and forth money wise. And then um, not being able to work now means then how do I double dip? You know, I'd have to, if I go for a couple of few months at a time, I, not, I have to still take care of a mortgage here and expenses here and then go and take care of that. And I just figured, you know what? We're not doing it. I prayed about it. I have talked to my ancestors and my family, uh, the living and the dead. Um, and... Yeah, it's time for me to go. Going back and forth is only going to prolong what is going to happen. And in the going back and forth and remaining in America, America KKK, any longer could actually mean that I don't make it. And so I don't want to take that risk. I'm going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Shelley, uh, congratulations. Uh, excellent move and everything. Um, just hoping that uh, some of the things that we put in place assist you in making that decision, like the um, citizenship conference, the business conference, and the land tour presentation. Yes. Actually, not only did it help me then, it's helping me now. Um, I've been in touch with uh, Constance Wako, who I stayed with when I was in Ghana, who I was introduced to through uh, Dr. Molana with the Ministry of, Future, of the Future. Um, we, after attending that uh, conference with him, uh, I became a member of MOF, and um, there are just so many services that are available to uh, ministry members, um, from assisting with citizenship prep preparation for the citizenship, as well as residency, as well as helping you find um, housing, you know, uh, long term or temporary while you're there. Uh, so yeah, I'm, and, and there is a conference coming up. I don't think I will be there in time to to attend that conference because I think it's in April. But uh, Dr. Milana, if you have an opportunity um, when you're there, please meet him um, and connect with Ministry of the Future. There are quite a number of repacks there that I was able to meet who are um, living in different areas, doing different things, everything from retired folks to business folks to entrepreneurs, um, folks who have been there. I think. Uh, um, Erna, I think, has been there like over 20 years, but then you meet some folks who have only been there a couple of months. Uh, so just a very diverse group of, of, of repatriated diaspora showing up in Ghana. And everybody in Ghana is saying Akwaba. Um, the people there are very welcoming. Um, the team that Bomani has put together is not only welcoming, but they, they are... They're beyond welcoming and supportive. They really will. Sometimes I feel like I'm being carried along. Um, you know, you can call somebody and they get back to you and let you know what's going on. Right now, um, Kobana is working on uh, getting a room for me in the same house, hopefully with uh, Carmen and Leonard. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's just it's it's nice to be able to know that there's a community there, not only expats, but also Ghanaians who are um, just waiting to be supportive and be family and be um, welcoming. Yeah. 
all that part. Absolutely, Shelly. Uh, excellent. I uh, appreciate all your wonderful feedback because uh, you're there last, so it's still fresh in your energy. Yes. What I've seen is just all this go together, like little by little, day by day, for the last 18 months. And we have arrived. So remember, you literally was on the line with us, and we got you in recording. There was nothing right there. Now, Leonard and Carmen is just building their foundation on plot number 21. Uh, so uh, just like that, and then you know the public uh, toilet is right there in the town, and as a foundation of this, you know we came there to just be a part of the community. So that's it, family. So those are things going on. So let me mute you, um, and then um, just uh, see if anyone has any questions for you. As a matter of fact, anyone you have any questions for Shelley before I meet her? All right, since uh, you are shy, what I'm gonna do? Uh, Brother Derek or Chaz, uh, would you guys like to share your experience uh, on this recorded call? All right, Derek, um, I'll try to unmute Chaz. So, Derek, I'm going to unmute you. Okay. All right, everyone. I'm, I'm Derek uh, Word. I'm based out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, I first went on the tour with Bo Money in 2000, uh, July 2011. It actually was my first time uh, traveling abroad outside of America, and so I, I made it a I made it a promise to myself that I would do that uh, out of respect for the ancestors because this is this has been about them the whole entire time to pay that homage. So I came across Bo Money's tour at uh, the Mapping Fest in Atlanta, two, and I think it was the year of 2010, 2009, or it was 2010, one of those years, and I decided that I'm going to make it a special thing to take my first trip and it's going to be to the motherland because I had been studying and doing all kind of research uh, when it comes to, you know, African-American history and African history on the planet. So I took my first tour of money in 2000, uh, July 2011, and uh, I was impressed. Also, I was in – and not only was I, was I impressed, but I was in culture shock because I had not been anywhere. So to get on the ground in, 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 in Africa, Ghana, to feel, you know, the motherland and to feel the warmth of the people – it was, a, it was a culture shock. It was a good culture shock and experience for 12 days on the ground that I will never forget, and, the, and it actually left a forever impression on my mind and on my soul um, that I'll be able to time, tell for, uh, you know, for time to come. Um, but I decided then when I visited, I said to myself, I said, this is where I need to be. America um, is not where I belong. Um, didn't like the treatment from when I was you know, growing up as a child upward. But I found out this is a place where I could be. As I toured around the country, we rode the tour bus. I got to go to several different regions and meet a lot of people from the diaspora that had repatriated there, a lot of elders that I spoke with and I've seen. And I was so impressed by that and the spirit that they carried and by seeing them being disconnected from America in this new land, um, that was a beautiful thing for me. So I decided when I got back that I was going to go again and I didn't, I didn't, I know it was, wasn't going to be the following year, so I knew it was going to be soon. So once I got my mind back acclimated and, um, and, 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 and figured out when I wanted to go, I decided to go again in 2015. So I came back on a second tour with Bo Money's group, and I made a decision after that because I, everything that I've seen the second time pretty much reconfirmed and reinforced everything that this, was, this place does not change, and if it's changing, it's changed for the better. I've seen improvements from the first time that I went and then uh, met some of the same people that were on the first tour, met them, Ghanaians again, and people from the diaspora. Some people came back on the second tour. And uh, I made a decision then, uh, this is where I want to be. Um, I can make my footprint and in introduction into the continent. And uh, I said, well, Ghana is going to be the place to be because everything is already set up, um, kind of like a franchise. Everything is set up, so it wouldn't make sense for me to go to other parts of Africa uh, I need to go ahead and, and walk in the footsteps of the ones before me, and they pay already set and paid the way, so that's exactly what I did and what I'm doing now. Uh, I decided to join the Black Star community because of the reputation and the impression that I got off of Bo Money in 2011 and 2015. And through the course of those 10 years, me and Bo, me and Bo Money communicate uh, quite often throughout the month, and I, I like Bo Money's uh, consistency, and I like the fact that what he believes in and his vision uh, and, 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 and the community actually coming to fruition, I decided when he gave me the offer 
in uh, 2000, uh, May of 2020 uh, of, of putting down a deposit and joining the community, I thought about it for, for a few days, and uh, I looked at how he was creating everything with bylaws and uh, working with an attorney and, and went on conference calls and heard um, what was being said, and I was sold. I was like, I like this. I want to be part of this. Everything has been consistent, and I believe that we can build a community that is communal living that can grow and probably go from being a town into being a, a, a city and, and being something large in the future. So that's when I decided to put down my deposit and then uh, made my payments and paid it off within a few months. And so that, that's what made me join the community is because I believe in the vision. I believe in the, the uh, d- uh, democratic way that Bomani set up everything in a communal way to where you can own the actual land, get a deed to it, um, and that way it can't be taken away. And if, it, if, if, if you did want to get out of the uh, community, you can sell your property or, you know, it's, there's so many different options, but the money is not building this community as a founding father, um, as a, as a uh, uh, I guess you want to say, a, as a dictator. Uh, he's given uh, everything in a democratic format, and that's when I decided I was like, I like this. I like the way it's rules and regulations and board members and committees to reassure that when I invest in this, everything is going to be in a, on the up and up. And as years go, you know, as years to come, that I'll have a safe and secure investment and a lot of potential for growth in the Black Star community. So that's my experience. I mean, this is, again, uh, 10 years. Um, uh, that was 20, I was 29 then. I'm 39 now. So that's 10 years of just um, uh, so much of exposure and so many experiences. And um, that's just showing you guys or a testimony to you guys how consistent and my experience has been with uh, with uh, Bo Money and Africa for the Africans and now getting ready to begin this new journey with uh, Black Star. So, I, again, I give it full support, and I'm going to be committed and, and hopefully start breaking ground on the property in the next few months and uh, try to have my property finished up, built completely by the end of 2021. So that's my experience. If you got any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy to answer those. All right, uh, thank you, Derek. Uh, well said, man. Appreciate your, your energy on that one. And, um, and family is all about experience, so that's what all of us are doing, sharing our experience, and let everyone know the real Africa, because you, know, you have people on YouTube that's come up with all kinds of stories. Just started going to Africa like a few days ago, and they're, they're already experts. I can't, Go ahead. <laughs> can, I say one more, can, can I say one more thing? But oh, absolutely, brother. Share as much as you can. All right. It, um, during COVID, I guess it's kind of things that's kind of divine, if you want to say. COVID put a sense of urgency on me. Uh, to, be, to buy the land because I've seen as I go around, because I, I deliver trucks throughout the continental United States and also Canada. So when I'm driving around and I've seen how the psych, psychological effect and the mobility uh, effect that it's having on people and economical effects, all different types of things during COVID, it made me have more of a sense of urgency to have a piece of land in, uh, in, La- in, in, in Ghana or in Africa that's off the grid, where it can be self-sustainable, my property can be built, or the home can be built with solar panels, to where you're not dealing with on the grid, like we're seeing in the states, where you're dependent on the government. We're dependent on the government for everything. So it it, it, it just it, it just brought me more of of an um, of, of of a awareness of how why it's been so important to have a property on the on the continent because of what I've experienced and seen in the states. I mean, I've seen people standing in line and food lines and restaurants and lines, and I've done it myself just to get the full experience. And I was like, it's important for me to build that property because that's a safe, ha- safe haven and it's a place of refuge while the rest of the world is on lockdown. You can retreat to your property where you know you have everything you need. You have your uh, sustainable water system. You have your sustainable electricity, uh, power. You have everything you need. So I think it's just, it's, for me, it's one of the best things that I could do by witnessing what's going on with COVID. So I think it's, if you think of it that way, you're building a property that's self-sustainable to where you're not going to have to ask anybody for anything. I mean, that is priceless. That is priceless. All right? Uh, yes, Derek. Right. Uh, yes, back over Turn it back over to money, but yeah. Yeah, appreciate your brother, uh, all the feedback and everything. And, yeah, this is just us just sharing with everyone to um, – that uh, if we do it together, we can do it stronger, and you know, and uh, we we'll look out for each other. And that's the relationship I built with everyone. So it's like it's so much more for us there in Ghana. Uh, that's just waiting to support and help all of us to make that move. We got shippers, you got builders, 
on a place. So last 18 months, that's what we've been working on. And we've shared that uh, consistently uh, throughout the months. All right, uh, so family, anyone have any questions for Shelly or um, uh, Kwame, uh, Santi, our brother Derek, um, those who know him as that. But just um, anyone have any questions for any one of us uh, in general or specific? And that's our star six to unmute yourself and give your name and where you're calling from. Hey, Bomani, I have another question. Uh, sure, go ahead. All right, uh, just to give an idea, and I think this is what potential um, individuals that want to join and purchase a plot or more, can you give them an idea of, for example, um, of uh, the builders? For example, I co contacted two builders, and they gave me a price range, and I think that's what some people want to hear right now, what maybe would it be on the low end or high end of what building a structure, quality structure, you know, materials and things like that, what would it cost estimated to build something on the low end and also a high end so people can get ideas. And also with that, uh, letting individuals know that when building in the community or on the continent, you build, you can, you have the option of building uh, in phases, which is great because now you, you have time and you're not, you're not blitzed for time and on a time limit to where you have to rush, but you can pay, uh, in phases, meaning you can pay every two months, every three months, until your actual property is um, built instead of waiting, you know, three or four years trying to save up the, the money to build it or the total amount. And you can split it in half or you can split it in four quarters or five quarters. Can you give people maybe an idea of that so they can get a little bit more, maybe that will build like a little bit of confidence because the vision will come a little bit clearer financially. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you make all great points. And um, what I've always uh, have in place is a uh, you know is a payment plan that and everything is arranged from how we even do the tours to how we negotiate the price of everything. It just is a payment plan because you know we don't have a flood of money to flood anything. So you get to spend the first uh, three months uh, paying for your land, and uh, the next three months are uh, getting other parts uh, in place, and then you can spend a uh, you know, full a year to two years uh, laying out uh, the setup for your your home. And then what you do, you just build it in phases. And that's what uh, the builders understand. And we understand that uh, no one is giving them a flood of money uh, up front. Um, and all of them understand that. So that makes it a little more simpler and leverage. And just like the flexibility of building homes. Someone asks if uh, we can custom build homes. You can build a home that you need. Just everything that needs to look nice, clean, and organized. And that's the main thing I want everyone to vision, just like how they see the website, just like they see how the documents are sent and all the things that we have. It's the same flow what we have. Everything has to be neat, organized, structure, and on point. Uh, that way, when we're presenting, we're presenting things organized, professional, looks good, and we're, we're competing and connecting with people just uh, throughout the world. Let everyone know that we can do this together at a high level, and we can come up with our way of how we're uniquely getting it done. Uh, so uh, you can, you know, we want to see all different kind of homes, especially in phase one, and that will that will just give us a better idea of how we can really create more homes in phase two and even sectioned off and doing certain things. But uh, the phase one is just a unique layout of just a 15-acre foundation, same family. A lot of times we just need to start out small versus some of these people getting free land, 5,000 acres, this 1,000 acres, that 1,000 acres, 2,000 acres, uh, 300 acres, and so on. And you, know, you, you can't really manage in those things, and then you have to literally have a management and organization system in. And that's what we have uh, in place. And, the bridge that we have connected from, you know, for, you know from the African diaspora to uh, Ghana has just been incredible. And we have used all of our resources that we have worked and built with uh, in place to be supportive of this. So whether you're coming into the country, you need lodging, you need to connect with this person, you need to stay at this hotel, you need a pickup, you need this arrange, you need certain things uh, taken care of. We just have trustworthy people because at the end of the day, if you've never been somewhere before, you don't just want to just roll off with anyone. So it makes it a little easier to feel and connect and so many of us here and there and that's moving back and forth it's like a consistent like i mentioned earlier just a strong bridge that we've connected so but could uh, you give, could you give like a a um a high low like if somebody yeah, I, I was uh, yeah i'm gonna get to that and, and, I, and i apologize for jagging on so um what it is uh let's base everything on like a three bedroom two bathroom Flow, uh, flow. Uh, so that you know, once again, that has to be nice and neat. 
So whether you do a container house or you do a brick house, ram your earth, those would be the flexibility of the, the prices. So example, the three bedroom, two bathroom popular, like, you know, the popular layout in the world, which is called, you know, either ranch, uh, whether you put a garage or not, it all depends on you. That's, you know, you're not limited to any of those things. Whether you put another little house in the back, that's not limited to you also. But you'll be looking at about forty to sixty thousand um, dollars, and then from there on, you're looking at from sixty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars, and it's just based on how you know how you want to really just make it. Uh, so those those are honestly really the high end and low end. You know, forty to a hundred thousand, or I would personally more say forty to to eighty, ninety thousand. Uh, but that's uh, out there in the Winneba area. It's not like when you go build, build in a city in Accra. It's just Everything is a little higher, and then you know it is. Man, the city is always bureaucracy, and always politics. <laughs> so our goal is to conquer all of those things where we are, because it's a much smaller community, more family-oriented, more where we build the right relationships and work out with a bunch of you know things like that. So I feel like that's what we have done, uh, and it's the same thing that we kind of talk with the builders that we're working towards more of the reasonable end, and you know. And I always tell people, like, you have to make it clear with everyone that we're not rich from the diaspora. We're a bunch of poor folks putting our pennies together. Not exactly that we are. It's just what you have to sell everyone that you're dealing with. Because, you know, when the, you know, people naturally hear certain things, someone coming from another country, is like gold bells are ringing. And um, you don't ever want to be put in that situation where every time people deal with you, it's about just charging you ridiculous prices that don't make no sense. So that's when people start complaining and making YouTube videos. But I tell people... Everything, just like I mentioned earlier, everything is about negotiation. And then, you know, you, you kind of have people crossed in the middle because, like, say if you talk to one of the builders and they're trying to highball you <laughs> and things like that, um, if that's even a word, trying to charge you more, then you just reach out to me and say, hey, Bomani, this person is doing this. And then I reach out to this person and communicate with them, and then they reach back out to you and communicate with you, and, and then it will be worked out. It's like one, two, three, done. And the, the unnecessary back and forth is going to limit all of us in progressing because what's been explained to all of the builders is that they'll all be future, uh, you know, more successful. Because what you have is um, that you build a foundation to where they're getting consistent business. So you can literally negotiate those prices. On a normal term, no, you really can't negotiate those prices. You from somewhere or us from somewhere else from the African diaspora, even though you know, it's still going to be that situation, you will, get, you will get charged sometimes a lot more than that. So that's what we have done to save all of us more money, because the more money we can save, we can build our own credit union and build our own uh, internal and external investments. Uh, so that's uh, it, family. And as far as this, uh, anything else, it's just structured that way where we're just putting our money together. So people ask me, how can we build the beachfront property? Because I keep on sending that information and say the beach is two miles away. Shelly was right there. It, was, it didn't take you half an hour, right? It was a quick ride, right? <laughs> Not really people hanging out down there, and its debris has washed up, and it's not getting picked up. So a lot of us are just anxious to get back and just have a beach cleanup party and hang out on our our beach. It's phenomenal, people. It's phenomenal. <laughs> uh, yes, absolutely. Um, uh, Shelly, and also family. Yeah, absolutely. Just give me a few seconds. Uh, family, the original pictures we showed in December 2019, that's how the beach actually looked, and that was impressive. But, yeah, Shelly's right. The whole, when you close down these beaches and then, you know, we're not out there using it and doing certain things, it will just end up like that. So we don't want to scare anybody. I was explaining to everyone in the video that, hey, this is what happened, and then once everything clear back up, we're going to make it look nice again, and we're going to have beach parties and all kind of niceness. Our brother Derek, uh, go ahead with your question. I was going to piggyback off Bo Money when he mentioned the prices of the home. Um, I contacted off of the list that Bo Money issued uh, uh, a couple of months ago. I, I contacted two builders. There, one was the Earth, the Earth Ram home in which uh, Corman and Leonard are building on their property, which is a zero thermal home, which is uh, definitely a quality home that will last over a thousand years using that Earth Ram building uh, 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 materials. And the techniques, uh, but also I contacted another build, uh, building, a builder, Irufu, I think it is for money, Irufu uh, uh, Construction, and they mentioned um, that they could build a um, somewhere else in the community got a blueprint and purchased the blueprint and the, and the cost, cost of materials 
and uh, they gave uh, another member a price of low end, uh, twenty five thousand US to build a three bedroom, two bath. And um, if you go on their website, you can look at the type of projects that a roof will actually built. And uh, this is, I wouldn't really call it low end for twenty five, but I, it looks based on the blueprint like it's going to be a good quality ranch home uh, with two patios, one on each end uh, of the home, and uh, that's sixteen hundred square feet. So I'm just kind of piggybacking off of you, Bo Money, but uh, I I believe that um, the prices also um, will increase once you add your self sustainable. Uh, solar panels, because you're going to do that at the beginning of the, you know, during the construction, so it could be built, built with the home. Uh, so I think that costs can vary, but it's based on you and your creativity and like old money. It's, you understand, you want to have a quality home, it's up to you to build when it comes to your blueprint and to being creative and what costs efficient. So, that, but the member did get a quote of 25, but I don't think that includes the uh, solar panel system. So just want to give you guys that info. Uh, yes, my brother. Um, uh, thank you. Um, and that's what we have to do, family. We're putting our minds together and we're thinking about how we're going to do this together and make it work. So as time goes along, we're figuring it out and we're progressing. And it's you know, kind of like literally starting from a scratch of paper and working our way up. And that's what we've done. So everything is it's more like organic. Uh, it's not just, uh, you know, and it is, you know, so everything that we've covered is, it, uh, you know, looking to connect with the right people who this, uh, you know, who uh, can come together and make it work. So, um, anyone have any questions for any of us? Uh, please uh, just uh, give a name, where you're calling from, and then your question. And also, Chad, still waiting for you to get unmuted if you can join us. All right. So the question that's on the, um, the chat is plot 21 in the in the is in phase one. Uh, plot uh, 1 to 50 is all in phase 1. That's all 50 acres. Our next phase is what we're going to mark out. It's what people have reserved, been reserving plots on. Uh, we're going to mark it out. Um, and then for those on the top of the list, you get to select what plots you want. Oh, I'm here with right, Chaz, uh, Go ahead, Chaz. You're muted. I can hear that in clear. Shelly, let me mute you. And Derek, let me mute you. All right, Chaz, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, yeah. Um, my name is Jazz. I'm um, the uh, uh, over the um, or in the whichever or however you want to look at it, sustainability uh, sustainable utilities committee. And uh, what we do is uh, we're we're trying to um, find the best ways to be able to be uh, independent of, uh, of of the grid, so to speak. So that includes um, using solar energy for our uh, our power needs. And uh, it also includes the, um, with regard to water. And one of the things that we've been discussing is um, possibility of boreholes. And the other one, which is, uh, which seems to be very likely, is um, the uh, water catchment, um, or I should say water harvesting. The water harvesting um, is a real good way to do it. Um, I'm going through some things right now to find out which. It has, uh, it has, uh, Can you hear me? Back up so we can just make sure we correct it right. It's rain harvesting, catching water from the air, rain or even the air, uh, and then the you know right. the, even no borehole as the water you get from the ground. Uh, but the, right. the, yeah, uh, so yeah, that I'm, way. I'm sorry, I think we get it. Everybody's not yeah. Everybody's on on the page with it. Yes, a borehole is what we get from the ground from the underwater under underwater uh, sources. Um, most places wherever you wherever you live, even where you're living at right now, you'll find water under the ground. Uh, depending on where where you are, it could be very deep, but it could be very shallow. Um, that is an involved process. Uh, the other one is uh, the the whole thing with rain uh, with rain harvesting. Uh, Ghana has rainy seasons, which we could actually take advantage of that by c collecting that collecting that water from the rain. Um, there are some uh, there are some arrangements where you could even use like your gutters to uh, to have that water caught into a container and filtered, and then you have it pumped to, you know, pumped into, pumped into your house for various uses or whatever. Uh, so those things are being looked into right now with regard to the uh, water catchment. I mean, excuse me, water harvesting. Um, so that's that's pretty much where we are where we are with it right now. We're trying to find the best way to do it. Um, 
one of the things we're looking at, of course, a, a hybrid system. And the hybrid system would be a bit, would be where you would use some of both. Uh, we could actually pump the water from the ground, for instance, and have it in in, in uh, various catchy areas, and then pump individually like that from you know, to individual houses. And along with that, we still have the uh, the, the rainwater catch. Uh, either way, we're going to need water. That's for sure for our personal uses and for the uses of our um, of the uh, proposed agriculture. Uh, uh, initiatives that we that we have uh, since we intend to be growing things and stuff okay um, internet stuff is going to be something we're going to look into more so when we get there got people we got people there that's that's able to get to internet and whatever and just we're just trying to figure out some of the details with that so that's basically where we stand at with and of course there's other things that we look at as well that are possible because the main thing with the sustainability is that which I tell all the members Please reach out to one another because a big part of sustainability is something that is very social. We're basically a whole bunch of roommates that are living in houses. So we're really roommates with each other. So there's a lot of things that it's important for us to um, to interact with one another so we can work together. Um, where you, as you're interacting, keep in mind that every individual has all kinds of talents. Those individuals with those talents, if you share them with one another, you might be able to bounce some ideas off each other, something that could actually benefit us as a, commu as a community. So we have to have a community state of mind with think in terms of being a community and what kind of things we can accomplish. Uh, Brother Bomani has been uh, instrumental in, in actually establishing, I mean, when you think about it, you look at other kind of groups, they don't care what they're involved in. They're not involved as we are involved right now with our various committees and stuff. These committees have, uh, have helped us, has helped us actually propel this stuff uh, within about, what, a year and a half, I think. And we've gotten to this point. I think our first meeting took place uh, maybe about a year ago when we had our first general meeting. And look at how far we've come. A lot of communities that sit around and talk about what's happened and all the rest of that stuff instead of talking about what is happening and where we're going to from here. So I encourage all of you to please... Um, be very active. Uh, get up on the, you know whatever committees whatever committees you're on. Be very active with trying to do the research because really having a bunch of minds is like having a bunch of hands. You can lift. You can you got enough hands. You can lift most anything. You got a bunch of minds. You can solve most anything. And there's all kind of ways to, to to do something. So that that's um, that's basically my message that I have. Are there any questions for me? I hear crickets. Are there any other questions for me? Uh, yes, sir. Green Chaz, appreciate your energy. Uh, everybody's acting shy tonight. So, family, it's star six. So, meet yourself to, if you have any questions for Chaz. This is uh, the vice president of the uh, uh, organization Black South Pan African Community. Uh, brother uh, Kwame Asante, uh, um, uh, Dirk, um, which is part of the recycling and waste management um, uh, committee, and. Um, so, uh, as a matter of fact, um, um, our brother Kwame, you have anything you'd like to share as far as the recycling updates and what are some of the best options for uh, sewage and things like that and septic tanks? We're responsible on our committee of doing the building process and when the community is uh, built of removing waste and, and uh, disposing it and working with uh, company or company our companies and, and uh, around the area to keep everything uh, clean and uh, in order to make sure there's no trash and things of that sort. Even during the building process, we'll be working to get everything, make sure it has dumpsters and things like that so everything can be taken to the right facilities and recycled and disposed of properly. Uh, when it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, things, when it comes to waste, um, we're actually committed to that's working on planning when it comes to sewage and things like that. Um, and we'll have further, further more detail about that uh, because we have conference calls every month. So we'll be posting videos on that or any updates or changes and current events. So I'll be sure that we post that and keep you guys informed on what our committee is uh, doing and at the moment and uh, what the future of any new ideas and policies, anything of that sort. But as of right now, it's just basic things and ideas and reaching out to individuals, uh, companies about uh, fees and uh, estimates on 
what it costs to install, for example, rain catch water system and things of that sort. Uh, so we'll we'll have further information on that. And Chaz, um, I have a question for you. If you could possibly explain, because um, I know you posted uh, uh, months back about the solar, uh, the cost. Can you give everybody a low end and a high end cost and uh, the amount of power voltage uh, compared to what you're going to need possibly in a full-size house, two-bedroom, three-bedroom, to power up that uh, home uh, and, and comparing that to what type of power is used in the state, kind of like what you did a few months back. Can you give people an idea of that so they can be a little bit educated on that, the amount and voltage, the, what, it, what, it, what it perhaps will cost? Yeah, I can do that. Uh, give me just a moment to see if I can find it. Not right off the top just of my to, head. Yeah, just to um, answer me, yeah, just you can throw a number out there. I beg your pardon? I said, you, you don't have to be accurate. It can just be an estimate low end. You know, it ain't got to be, you know. I still didn't hear your voice got a ball crash there. No, I said it doesn't have to be exact like the paperwork said, but it could be like low end. You know, something low yeah, end. Uh, yeah, yeah. One of the things, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, one of the things I tell people is to look at your light bill so you can get an idea about how much how much is you using per month. So that it makes sense, because uh, solar really involves uh, it involves having a. Uh, uh, well, I'm, I'm talking all this while I'm trying to find the uh, particular document here. Um, it involves the um, um, uh, the solar panels, of course, and um, it involves batteries and it involves something called a converter. The uh, batteries, of course, store the energy from the solar. And the converter is actually what helps what converts the uh, the DC power into the AC power. That um, that power um, that you're using in your house, of course, you need wires and all the rest of this stuff and conduit and everything else. But anyway, that power is the stuff that that you're using um, from uh, uh, as a result of the battery storing what you collected with the solar. Now, those costs, from what I recollect, and it seemed like it was about maybe 12000 But then, you know, you got your own twelve. I think it was twelve or 14000 I'm trying to find the exact document right now. You just bear with me a moment. Um, one of the things that you'll find in this stuff is that um, with it, you, you know, because you're, you're owning, basically you're owning your own electricity. Um, you're talking about a few panels, and consider the fact that where you're living is the um, is right there at the equator. So you're getting sun most of the time, and that is uh, um, that is that's to your advantage right there. And of course, how you build your home will make a difference as well, because how you build your home, you build your home where it's cooler, so the need for air conditioning and fans is minimized a bit. Uh, especially for those who get like, as you mentioned earlier, with the Ram Durf homes and stuff. Just a moment. Now, high end, this stuff can cost you somewhere near, can cost you $35,000. On the low end, with 12 panels, that are, and then that would give you 54 panels. Now, that $35,000 might be something we might want to use for our business area, depending on how we're going to use that. Uh, on the low end, somewhere around, uh, Eight thousand dollars, but if we talk about three point eight four kilowatts, um, I'll post this to our um, to our site so that you all have a, a look at it. Uh, once Leonard and Carmen had gotten there, they were actually, actually able to find because my initial presentation was done with another company. Uh, Leonard and Carmen was there, and I think that I think that that's where I got like that twelve at twelve thousand or fourteen thousand uh, dollar figure which is comparatively cheap and they got and they have the they have the um the, um a good a good plan i think it, i think it's somewhere over four thousand kilowatts so if i can find my other um thing here and chad that could power up an entire house refrigerator major appliances lights that's like using how we use in the states on a regular basis like if a full family right. is there, you lose it on a regular basis, exactly. 
Exactly, and that's and and that's uh, like I said, and it's, it's your electricity, so you don't have to worry about your electricity going up because basically you own all the parts for your electricity. Only thing you have to worry about is is uh, um, and, uh, is that is replacing those batteries, and those batteries, uh, from what I recollect, it seems like. It might like it be. It might be about a ten-year warranty. I can't remember exactly. Perfect. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, appreciate it. Okay, was that, was that, yeah, does that get you? Does that pretty much get you there? Oh yeah, that gets everybody an idea, so that way they can get an idea of cost estimates of homes, and then especially solar because that's the most. I believe outside of the structure, the solar is the most important because that's the, the, the self-sustainability uh, about you know. Uh, when it comes to utility electricity, that's very important right. with people. So yeah, that that right. that definitely answers everything. Yeah, and you know, and you know, another thing is too, because one thing we were looking at is the fact that by us being, you know, by us, by us being there as a group, um, and at that time we're thinking we were all of us being there, maybe all at one time, we could actually purchase those things ourselves as a group, thereby getting uh, realizing a, a discount. Usually, when you buy things in bulk, you get a discount. Uh, one of the things also to keep in mind, and this goes back to what Bomani was talking about with regard to cooperative economics. Uh, we have we have a few members in our group that are technically inclined, who have uh, either uh, um, worked directly with some level of electricity or electronics, or even taught it. Well, then that gives us an opportunity to be able to uh, train people within our own within our own smaller community and within the actual larger community. That we could be actually the go-to people to uh, to get parts from. At some point, we, we could probably um, uh, obtain parts and be able to sell them and be able to to you to utilize individuals as in, as installers. That way, we're educating the we're educating the, the the smaller community and the community at large. This is something that really could grow pretty big for us if we work it right. The other company that I was mentioning earlier, the one that I think that uh, the one that uh, um, Leonard and Carmen uses, is one called uh, Suka, and Suka uh, is located in Accra, there in, 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 in Accra rather, in uh, Ghana. And when I put the request in, um, it was for um, I think it was maybe for five to ten people. And the price that they gave me was uh, 63 at that time, because of course you know the uh, um, the value of the money changes as opposed to uh, based on you know a, a comparison ratio wise with the United States was 63 um, CDs, 63,000 CDs. So divide that by about five and a half, and then you use five and a half as, as an average, and you'll get an idea of what I'm talking about. And I'll post that for you all as well. And I have an actual um, receipt of theirs from the solar that, from from the solar that they had uh, um, um, made arrangements to get, and I'm more than notions and find some of this stuff. But anyway, you have a general idea. So you're talking about something that's, a, that, that's basically not going to hit your pocket for more than uh, ten to fifteen grand, and we're there. And there's probably all kinds of nice little ways that we can find out uh, different things to do. Um, for those of you who are, who are just starting with us, if you go to our docs and stuff, a lot of that stuff is already posted. The stuff that I mentioned is already posted. It's hard for me to just kind of sort through it um, like this for us. But uh, this is, you know, these are considerations. Uh, of course, the technology is changing. Uh, from the time we first started, I think they were just coming up with the, uh, the flexible panels. So there's all kinds of stuff that's changing in terms of the technology. Uh, the key for us is to be able to find a, the best thing that, set, that suits us best, that would give us a better, um, you know, give, give us a, a better bang for our buck. I appreciate it, Chaz. And also, um, uh, family, what Chaz was talking about, and it's more for those of us that's in a private group, uh, those of us that's on a WhatsApp group uh, page, um, you know, you can click on docs uh, in that committee. Uh, so um, anything else is just, you know, if all of us are in WhatsApp, it's easy for us to all, all to share information. So Chaz has all of these things on his uh, WhatsApp page, and he can share with anyone. Uh, so 
that's uh, and it's a uh, WhatsApp. Uh, it's a uh, green app on your phone that do the global connection as far as texting, uh, video call, and this uh, sharing of data. Yeah, uh, if you have any questions, you can always reach out to me, and I'll be glad to, you know, to uh, uh, to explain things to you. Because in that one, in that, in that WhatsApp, I mean, I, I have everything included in there, including uh, ways that you can calculate how much energy that you might be using. Of course, the easiest way, like I said, look at your light bill. On your light bill, it will give you what your kilowatt hours are. And you can pretty much base your stuff off of that from, from different parts of the year. Because in certain parts of the year, you might use more than, you know, depending on where you live. I mean, you might use, you, you might use, use more electric energy than other times. There you go, family, and that is the deal right there. Uh, so, uh, family, uh, anyone have any questions for us? Just uh, unmute yourself by pressing star six, and then uh, just give your name we're calling from, and then uh, let's dialogue. Uh, our goal is to cl uh, close if uh, we don't have any questions, but uh, we're, on, we're here on standby for those who want to communicate with us. Uh, go ahead. Hi, this is Lisa from Washington State, and me and Shelly have been talking pretty extensively, and then... At the beginning of this call, I got some good information on how to maneuver the website. So I've been pretty silent, uh, but um, I did come across the, like, bylaws and code of conduct. So I had just some questions there. Oh, perfect. Uh, ask a question, and then uh, one, of the other, uh, one of us would answer it. Um, and hopefully, Chaz, you're available to answer some of these questions. Okay. So, like, there's an elders board, which sounds really awesome and fair and democratic, but I wondered how that was, how's that formed? How's it determined? Who's the elder? Is it that already set? Is it something to be yet determined? How's that work? Oh, yes, uh, quick and then Chad, you can get some feedback on this one. Uh, these are all things that we're looking to consider and put in place, uh, and it's just structuring things based on um, our African culture as a people and how we, uh, we know we have been able to build great kingdoms and so you're kind of connecting uh, things historical as far as culture and then things that modern day work like us uh, reconnecting uh, in a community together. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. um, everyone that's a part of the, the active uh, uh, private group, these are things that all of us can discuss and whatever we just you know, kind of agree on, it's kind of like what we moved on and things like that. But the project is very flexible, but that's what was just to add some structure and order. And uh, Chaz, let me know what your feedback is on that one. Yeah, um, as we want to mention, this is a matter of just keeping, you know, uh, in keeping with, we're looking at what, what our modern, what our modern exposure is, versus the kind of things that we that we've carried over, and that we are yet to discover with regard to uh, traditional culture. And, and then okay. like in the age of uh, and how uh, the elders will be selected because we don't have an idea yet, and that's why I said. Um, yeah, yeah, we're still working it. Yeah, we're still working that through. Oh, okay, okay. But if you want to give some feedback, we'll definitely appreciate it because everything is open for uh, discussion and for us to communicate, and that's how we put everything together from the beginning. Um, well, it sounds uh, it sounds very very fair, and so I I don't have anything other than I was just wondering what the process was that for like the governing body, you know, how it's set up and. Oh yeah, anyway, I see that. Take volunteers. Oh, we take volunteers for everything because a volunteer uh, is usually that the work has to get done. So you want to give people a chance to want to do the work, do it. Uh, other than that, we have to <coughs> find people who are willing to do it. Uh, but yeah, we don't just uh, nominate or just uh, do those things. It's just it's up to us. Um, it's one of those projects where you may have say say example you have a uh, hundred people. You may get you may get about uh, 20 to 60 active people here and there, and some may be a little bit more laid back. But then again, when you tell them when everything is built, developed, and organized, uh, it was up to you to keep in touch and up to you to be at meetings and things like that, and you to communicate. Uh, and if you don't do that, then you know you kind of make yourself voiceless. Um, yeah, mm. it's kind of like a real version of this voting system that we deal with. Okay, yeah, that's, I appreciate that. You know, I was going to say also the importance of the and the importance of the elders uh, aboard is really to have uh, um, is to have some of that seasoned understanding that you can get mm -hmm. from talking with elders. Un unlike unlike in the United States, where where they cast elders aside. And if you think about some of the problems that we've had in our communities 
Well, if you look over the last 40 years, one of the things they've been doing is that they put their elders and senior citizen homes. So we want to make sure we have some of that elder wisdom operating, so to speak, elder experience operating. Okay, mm-hmm. and of course, not all elders. Not, you know, I mean, just you know, just like all children are not the uh, not a, not alike. Neither are all elders, but having some of those some of those various uh, uh, perspectives will help us to grow. You know, the, yeah. the real way to grow is that we ask each other questions and also ask ourselves individually. Ask ask your personal self questions. That's how you grow. Should yeah. I go right? Should yeah. I go left? Should I go up? Should I should should I go down? Hmm. You know, so this this is what this is about. We're trying we're trying to um, um, make sure that we're operating wisely. Um, yeah. And yes, we will make mistakes. People who don't make mistakes are usually the ones that don't do anything. <laughs> That's true. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we go make yeah. some, but the key is knowing how, understanding that it is, be able to identify it, and being able to analyze it in such a way where you can find out what is a better way. Mhm. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, you take that you never. And I and yeah, I definitely have um, you know respect for the elders platform. I just didn't know if it was already in place or what or where it was in the process. And I appreciate the feedback I, I've gotten on it. It's in the process, dear. It's in the process. And, and right. you know that, that right now we're just doing all we can to have the committee the committees operating the way they operate. Oh yeah, but yeah, I'm always of, taking volunteers for those who are ready to join anything in the future though. Because uh that's one of the things that's hard to get uh is people who just want to do something and ready to put it in place. So if you're one of those people that's uh that's that's powerful, that's perfect. We can we can get it started sooner than later is my point also. Right. Yeah. Something else I wanted yeah. to add too. Something else I wanted to add too. If you listen to Sister uh Sister uh, Doctor Aricana. One of the th- you know one of the things that seems to be a central part of her theme when she's talking is she's addressing us and understanding that look y'all got some brains that's what she's saying you got some brains let's put them to use let's put them to yeah. use you're only imprisoned by the by, by by the bars of a prison that you can't see that you're making for yourself you're a core COVID spirit or otherwise we have the brains to do this stuff. Oh yeah, we've had to bring, for sure. Be able to work through all this craziness all this time in this outsane asylum, then certainly we have enough brains to be able to make it to where to where actually we we become the go-to people. Right. And we want to solve this problem. You know, you live in a planet where, where, where you live in a on a planet where people are, are destroying things on a planet, if not the planet itself. We want to change that paradigm. We want to change the paradigm. And we are designed to solve problems. All we got to do is do it. Yeah, definitely. Okay. We we have what it takes. All we have to do is this exercise and apply ourselves. And together we can do this. It's not, it's not much we can't do together. Oh, yeah. I believe that for sure. And it sounds yeah. really exciting and positive and you know there's it's just um very timely it's very time it's ready you know the mm-hmm. time is very uh urgent in a way all all the stuff that you've been all the stuff you've been going through in your life has been preparing you for this moment the way i tell people i am born for this moment yeah Okay, so I mean, you know, this is a very, this is a very, as you say, it's timely. Yes, we've been prepared for this. You know, here for the, here we are. You think about like one of the things I tell people is like when you think about when Garvey had his movement, is it's unlikely that they were able that any of them had even met another African from the continent, unless they went to a World's Fair or something. Yeah, and I was okay. really blessed to be able to go to Ghana and. 2003, and I loved it, and, you know, and, yeah, it's just part of the research, you know, looking into every yeah. aspect of it, and this is the, one of the more positive things I've found, so, yeah. Yes, ma'am, good, 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 and the people here are sincere, but Romani is very sincere, otherwise I wouldn't be messing around, okay, 
this is the, the this is the, this is a serious matter that we're on. We have a serious mission. Yeah, and the thing of it is, everything that's been put together has been put together by a, a large group of people, including uh, even the people that we have there in Ghana that has that's never met each other before and are working together on our behalf. Uh, so it's, this is just the result of all of us working together in solidarity. And uh, if we had any issues or if the storm came, we uh, we, we had you know we already had a way to continue through the storm and make it work because um, a lot of times we just you know we have unfinished projects and unfinished things that we need to do. So everything is designed for us to keep moving forward nonstop. There's an element of faith in it, and there's nothing wrong with that. Well, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so what, what I'd like to do is show, like, the long-term documentation, what we've been showing. And even when we do the tours, showing, the how, showing what we're doing on the land. So um, I'm getting ready to head to Ghana with another group on May 24th, and we get there uh, May 25th, and we get on the land uh, May 29th. So my goal is to show even more of the updates uh, as far as the, the progress of just the people that are, are, are building or on the way to build uh, and then we just kind of keep it going and things like that. So, and then everyone, you know, it's kind of like we're telling everyone, whenever you, you feel or whenever you're ready, you can just uh, jump on in. But this is what we're doing. That way, more and more, as time goes along, anyone that's new to the journey or what we're doing, they can just have see progress and they can see other people. Like some people saw Lennon and Carmen on our entire tour in uh, December 2019. Now they've seen footage of them building on the land as of here in February. 2021. Yeah, and add to that, well, you know, the very fact that Carmen and, and, and Litter put that put that bathroom there says to me to, to, to me that's that's the, that's one of the coolest things, if not the coolest thing, that somebody could have done. Yeah, exactly, okay. put your money where your mouth is, and instead of going and criticizing, insulting right. our people, um, you just literally just um, you know um, be an example, and then work together with. Uh, the people and build something where we can all just say, hey, this is a, a product of us working together and, and solving our problems versus fighting each other or going off and insulting each other. Right, right, right. And we have to think each other, we have to think of each other as being family. I do it to you because you're my brother. I do it for you because you are my tutor. Simple as that. Simple as that. We have to have that kind of caring. That's, that's our strong suit. We have to play the strong suit. Right. You know, and uh, oh, and another thing with reference to elders, for, for for a lot of you that are older, I know if you think about when you were a youngster, this is back when youngsters could actually get a get a gig, and, and if and if they wanted to get out on their own, they could do it. Uh, if you had other friends, and a lot of a lot of people from my generation, some of the older ones, had real friends. Between the two of you, you usually were never broke because one person got paid one week, the other one got paid the other week. Between the two, they shared money. This is what this is about. They share resources. Okay. When, when, when you think of each other as family, then you are your brother. You are your sister's keeper. No strings attached. I do it because, because you are my family and it needs to be done. Simple as that. You know, that, that's, this is where we need to be at. This is our strength. As a matter of fact, that's what the powers that should not be are trying to erode in people. Why do you think they have anti-social distancing? They don't want people to get together, period, and certainly don't want our kind of people to get together. Okay, so it's important that we do this. That that is that is the revolution. Now that you want to do something revolutionary, hey, take care of each other. Now you got something here, and as Brother Bomani says, it's important. It's important that we do. We're do. We're the doing people, not just the talking people. We are the doing people. We're putting our fat where it's at, you know. And I can't stress it enough that it's important that we do certain kinds of research. You, know, you think about it, this is the, what they call the uh, the so-called Black History or African History or African American History Month. And all the time that you've learned, I don't know how old you are, all the time you've learned African history, they never told you about how something worked, did they? You know, they can tell you about so-and-so inventing this and so-and-so inventing that, but they're not, they're not giving you information about how it works. So it's important that we do our own digging. You have to be a digger. You have to be a digger. 
You have to dig. You want something? If you want to grow something, you got to do some digging. You want to mine something? You got to do some digging. Your nose itch a little bit? You got to do a little digging. Digging is what we do. You dig? I wanted to jump in, you guys, um, just because I noticed um, people are kind of scooting out, and I just want to make sure that people who haven't had a chance, I see a lot of names on there who haven't said anything or asked anything. Um, maybe those people might have a question or something that's, that's pressing to be asked. Or not. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I've said several Please times, if anyone have any questions, just uh, ask a question. Right now, Chaz is just kind of going through certain things. But once someone has a question, they just chime in and we ask, answer that question. Uh, so anyone family, just unmute yourself by pressing star six. But we would like to hear from everyone before we close. So everyone, please, as uh, Shalise mentioned, we show sure you have a question. So just unmute yourself and let's dialogue a little bit. And we'd, we have all of this organized for the recording. So we're trying to share it with more and more people so we could build this community and help the rest of our people who want to move to Africa, make it a nice, smooth, organized move. Like Shelly is going to be one of the people that say, hey, I uh, experienced the whole, the, the whole aspect of what uh, we're offering as far as traveling on tour, moving to the country, getting the shippers to help her, and all those, those things. Uh, so those are the things that we just want to keep documenting and talk about. Uh, that way we can let other people know there is hope and then that what we're doing and what other people are doing is actually a, a solution to this moving to Africa versus moving on your own. The line is open. Yeah, and on that note, but uh, and thank you, Shelly, for bringing that up. On that note, if you have questions, remember the stupidest question is the one you don't ask. So if you got some questions about something, something that, that that doesn't feel right to you, you're not clear on, then call up Brother Bomani. Call up me, and you know, uh, Bomani can answer most of your questions. I'm not as knowledgeable as he is in this, but wherever the, the extent of my knowledge, I'm willing to share it. Hello, everybody. Is y'all there? <laughs> Brother Bomani, you didn't, you didn't recruit a bunch of crickets or nothing, did you? Uh, <laughs> uh, the line is open, Chaz. I got mine muted until someone has a question for me, but I'm trying to get uh, you, uh, Kwame Asante, and uh, Shelly to dialogue with other people so you can they can hear more. Now, I've been hitting, uh, uh, people always hear my voice, me going through this and answering questions, so I'm trying to let everyone know that we are a group and we are a community, and I'm not the only voice. Yeah, this ain't about the guys and little yous. This is about all of us. I will I'm also sorry. add, those of you who are on the call, um, I'm going to be departing at the end of April, headed to Ghana. I'll probably, no, not probably, I know I will set up a WhatsApp group um, just to share with people kind of like a journal of what's going on day to day or week to week. I don't know if I'll do it every day. I'll probably do it every day at first. But um, certainly, if you want to follow my journey, um, uh, reach out and we can be on. You can, we can get on. You can get on my WhatsApp group. I depart the U.S. for the beginning phase one. Or, no, phase two. I already did phase one. Phase two is now the residency permit. Um, and uh, what do they call it? The uh, CIN number. Getting like the social security number, finding out about a bank or checking account, finding out about um, the national health program or medical insurance, um, finding out about whether I want to have a visa or not, or and what the cost of insurance are. Those kinds of things, those little nitty gritty things. I mean, there's the romantic piece of oh my God, I'm going to be living in Ghana, and then there's the piece that it's like okay, well now hold on. <laughs> you know, how am I going to get from uh, from Winneba to Accra? Well, there is, you know, you can't take the, you can't get a taxi every time. That can get expensive. But I understand uh, from um, some folks that you can get on a bus. That you just take the bus and for just a few CDs, you can go from Accra to Cape Coast even. Um, so learning how to navigate and how to navigate as a foreigner. There is Wakaba, but then there's also the fact that I'm a foreigner and I don't know the language and I don't know the culture and I'm going to step on people's toes and some people are going to want to take their Wakaba back. And, <laughs> and so, yeah, all of that. If you want to be on the journey with me, 
I will have a WhatsApp group, um, and I'll just be plugging in and letting folks know what's going on. I feel like Chaz. Hello. <laughs> All right, uh, uh, Green Shelley. What I did, um, I muted Chaz and the other person. Um, this way, uh, you, you know, we can get a clear recording. So uh, right now, it's just you, me and your line open. So family, uh, anyone else that's want to unmute their line, whether it's Chaz or anyone else, just unmute yourself and then uh, speak. I'm trying to get. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah, that's real good, Shelley, because uh, um, you know, with each of our, each of, each of us is going to have similar experiences and dissimilar experiences. The more we can share, the, the better it's going to be. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, yeah. I'm, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of ways. There's a lot of ways to prepare food. Yeah. Okay. A lot of ways to go yeah. about doing it. Exactly. I mean, what you can do with a chicken, right? So. Right. There you go. <laughs> all you got to do is think about when you go to one of all you can eat buffets. There's a bunch of ways to have a chicken. There you go. There you there's go. A bunch of ways to have vegetables. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's a bunch of ways to do something. This is a. Uh, um, don't forget, we're we're in a system where where our ingenuity has been basically uh, uh, um, uh, 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 watered down, hindered on some levels. And oh. one of the things that's hindered well, is that we've had to... Ma'am? I was going to challenge that. I don't know that it's been watered down as much as it's been used for different purposes up until now. Aha. Well, that, well, well that's, the, that's the watering down I'm talking about. Now, where you, you know, when you think about it, the purpose of you, of you learning is so that you can be a master of yourself of your own self. And this system does not encourage that. This, encourage, this system encourages mediocrity, and I dare say it doesn't even encourage you being mediocre at being mediocre. Wow. This time we have to really use, use what we got. Wow. Yeah. I cannot wait to sip wine at sunset with you, Brother Chaz. I mean, seriously, those of you who are just listening in, don't you want to be part of this conversation? <laughs> Ongoing, you know, at sunset? Um, yeah. Sitting out in, in, in the lawn chairs at, at, uh, in, uh, in Gahazi uh, talking about this. I just, yeah, I figured out what's the next thing we can do. Yeah. But, but, and the reason I said I challenged um, the watering down is because Sankofa, you know, mm -hmm. no one can come before so that you can return. Well, where we're from is multi cultures, multi tribes, multi languages. Yes, ma'am. But where we are as the descendants of the diaspora, of the slave trade. We are really one culture. African American is one culture. We speak one language. That even they tried to document that a few years back and figured out you couldn't write down Ebonic because it's the same language across the water. But we we took what fifty some odd languages and tribes and formed them into one in order to survive. So we've been uh, yes. and now we're going back. <laughs> but we. So I, I, don't, I don't, we didn't dilute. We, we, we did what we had to do. And, oh, yeah. And now, and here we are. Here we are. Yes, ma'am. Going back, yes, trying to figure out where we fit. <laughs> we're making it, you know. And there's a lot of variations on this theme that we're working with. And, we're, and, and the ones that, those of us who have chosen to do this, we're the ones that are supposed to do this. Yes. Because it ain't for everybody right now. I'm going I'm to mess with you again. <laughs> Did we choose it or did it choose us? Ooh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, Often you just got to back into things. Whoops, there he is. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's how it is. Sometimes, sometimes it's not the arrow hitting the target. Sometimes it's the target hitting the arrow. Right. Sometimes, or, or to say it more contemporary, saying, Sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. There you go. There you go. There I you go. I not out much since COVID. <laughs> <laughs> I see that Print T is applying for her passport, or U.S. passport or Ghanaian visa. I don't know. I, uh, what was, was the plan for what? Print. Just the, the name Print. Oh, I'll apply for my passport this weekend. All right, excellent. Uh, yeah, so that's the start. You just apply for your passport, 
Then you reach out to me. We get you the Ghana visa information. And then uh, you get on a flight uh, you, or get on one of our tours and we get you there. And then just open your mind to the experience. But all of this is the preliminary to make sure things are clear. It's a good idea to get the passport. Everybody, get your passport while you can. I, I sincerely believe that pretty soon we won't be able to get passports as readily as we can now. And uh, mm -hmm. I say strike while the iron is hot. Nobody's really paying that much attention. Go ahead and get it. Better to have it and not need it than to need it. And dang. Because, mm -hmm. again, you know, it, it, it's the... I'm going not just for myself. I'm going for my family. I, I just do believe that people will be looking for refuge and people will be looking for some place to come and, and breathe and heal and try to figure out something. Um, and so, yeah, I, I kind of feel like a uh, kind of feel like a pioneer. Of course. Yeah. Well, you hit it on the head. Yeah. You hit it on the head. You're basically we're basically we're like pioneers. And another thing I recommend, uh, try and get a hold to a Boy Scout, old Boy Scout manual. Oh. There's a lot of stuff in there that helps you out. You are right. I've used those before for camping. My kids and I used to. Yes, ma'am. I was an avid camper and, you know, backpacker, hiker, all that stuff. But I'm not going up in the woods with llamas anymore these days. But, yeah, that's a good yeah. idea. I think I will pick up a couple, see if I can find some over at the Goodwill. Yes, ma'am. Because we, we don't know how this thing is going to roll, period. The key is, you know, when you start talking about, you know, uh, you're, you're living your life and living your life as a survivor, and think about even prior to this transatlantic slave trade, our folks was, was, was actually moving along the globe. Yeah. Going somewhere everywhere. Yeah. Okay? The, the, so, the, the lines that define countries now were not there then. Not at all. And they were going, and when I, when I say we're going there everywhere, I'm talking about folks making boats and going places. Yeah. They were here. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know, it ain't no mistake. You don't believe me? Take a look at, take a look at Hawaiian history and look up Queen Lilio Kulani. And she looked like one of your aunties or somebody. She does. The black queen. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. You know, that, that tells you a whole lot right there. That tells you a whole lot right there. So, I mean, you know, we, 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 we are out. those people. I have a question to throw out for those of us who are already part of the community and also for those who are considering. How will we celebrate Independence Day? What day? Independence. Will we celebrate Indian independence? Will we, independent. <laughs> will we celebrate Jamaican independence? Will we celebrate Juneteenth? Will we celebrate all of them? Will we celebrate, um, our, you know, how will we celebrate independence? In Ma'am, I think what we're doing is celebrating independence. Day. Um, I'm not really a big, uh, what's the word for it, um, celebratory kind of person. The uh -huh. real celebration is when we build those cribs. And when we have when, when when we have our stuff set up, that's when the celebration happens. Yeah, well, but that's one day. I no, there's gonna there's got to be commemorations just like with any other community. But what will those be? I have no idea. I mean, like I said, I'm 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 basically about doing the work. <laughs> I'm basically about doing the work. Hey, with a party, let's get this out. The real party is doing the work. <laughs> Okay. Gonna... <laughs> I ain't gonna talk about doing the thing. Let's do the thing. Okay. Well. Okay. You know, let's, let's get this. Let's get this party started. No matter what kind of party it is, let's get this. The real party is the real work. Now that's that. That's where your stuff. That, you know where it shows. People out here they celebrate a lot of things, and uh, those things don't exist. If you're actually doing it, that is a celebration of it. That is true. But then the commemoration of it. Yeah, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to. I ain't gonna stop you from doing what you do. So anybody who wants to come over, I'll be ringing bells or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm not saying I won't build, bend an elbow with you, or, or share a challenge or nothing. I'm just saying, 
that you know I mean I mean if it's there I mean yeah I mean I I've been known to be the, the inspector of, of coleslaw and stuff. What the reality <laughs> is that? Potato pie. <laughs> All that stuff. That's what I do. You're that knock on the door. Inspector. What's, what's your That's lot me. number, Dad? Uh-huh. What's your lot number? Uh, 19. Okay. I guess that's around the corner, huh, <laughs> I'm five, I think. Okay. Yeah, everything is everything is around the corner. Um, yeah, you're right there by the um, Five is right there. <laughs> I'm around. I'm across from Mimi. I love it. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. yeah but it, it, it's about what we do when we, we you know, the the, the fruit, the, the the fruit that our tree bears will tell people what kind of tree we got. True. Now that that's what the deal. Yeah. That's oh, that's that's them folk. I'm excited about the opportunity to engage with the community. Um, yes, ma'am. And, and, and engage with the chief and, um, you know, be able to collaborate with him and become part of the community. I'm really excited about being able to be part of the orphanage. Um, I just think there's so, you know, I come out of the arts community here, and I just think there's some opportunities for trying to find some, you know, maybe young BFA students to come and do, you know, uh, their internships or some kind of a Peace Corps type opportunity for, you know, college grads, high school students to come and um, be there at the orphanage um, and just help. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited about what I can learn there from the other people. Mm-hmm. Those, that's coming, those are the people that have been there for generations. Yeah. That's what I'm excited about. You know, I'm, I mean, whatever whatever helps me to be able to be a better version of myself, that's what I'm interested in. I told people, even the children. Huh? Oops, sorry. I'm sorry. No, 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 you go ahead. I was saying, I, I even told children over there that they are my teachers um, because Though I know how to be African in America, I do not know how to be African in Ghana. And mm. so, you know, I said I come with a lot of knowledge, but I also come with a lot of gaps of information. And so it's mm. going to be that kind of a symbiotic relationship, teaching and learning at the same time. Yeah. I mean, well, you know, one thing to remember, even with that slave trade, people talk about how the folks here, the sadness that they suffered. Think about the sadness that the people suffered there. Oh my God! Their They've you taken away, uh, you know, they they, they 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 took away your son today, Shelley. They took you away your brother. You can still yeah. feel it when you're there. It's um, I think uh, uh, Chief Shabazz referred to it as a frequency when we were mm. at um, One Africa Resort, and you can feel it. There is a pain that runs so deep, and it's a loss, and you actually experience it at the orphanages. When you see how many orphans there are where people have just walked away. And it's yeah. just common to lose family. You know, and, and you just keep going like there's nothing, you know, that um and then you've got the part time orphans and the day orphans. It's just a very interesting part of that community of creating village for these children, but but people do just go. They leave. Mm-hmm. And there doesn't even seem to be a stigma to it. It's just, well, and so left. You know, we don't refer to it. I don't think they have phrases like absentee father or absentee parent. I don't think so. I no, mean, I mean, well, when, when you think of each other as being family, there are no orphans. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. You think about it, you come up as a kid. You had you had a bunch of mom. I know for me. I had a bunch of mamas and daddies, a bunch of sisters and brothers that, as far as I knew, were not direct blood relations. Later on, in some cases, I found out that they were. Mm-hmm. And this is this is part of how we've been able to survive throughout the years. Yeah. So we'll do it up there. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, you know, you know I mean, you know, we are supplied with we supplied with this gray matter uh, up in our domes. And his heart in our chest to do something with it, do something that's useful with it. 
we're here to make a better people, a better planet. Simple as that. Set an example for the rest of the planet. Simple as that. We have work to do. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Amazing work. What we are doing work. Doing. Well, Monty has had this for almost two decades. Dang, since he was, you know, probably... He was probably still running around smelling like Similac 20 years ago. Well, mine's been doing this a long time. You know? That's just funny, yeah. I'll I'll make the man that darn young now. <laughs> yeah, since I was about 26, uh, um, I started traveling to the continent. Uh, that's uh, 2004, so, and then Ghana, uh, 2006. So, from 2006 to now, we have been working on different ways for us to do this, and you now you keep on going back to the drawing board because uh, the people that we have tried to work with before. It just they weren't willing to put in the same work, so we just had to we, we just had to finally get to the point that we just had to organize our own land, set up, and write everything based on experience, and just be committed to doing the work regardless of whoever drops out and things like that. And that's what we have, we have accomplished. So that's what we're looking for: more dedicated people than anything else, not for people just to, to fantasize about this and get in and then cancel and want their money back and things like that. We want everyone to be clear. And that's yeah. why I appreciate you, Shelly, for coming and this experience and everything, and then making a commitment. Oh my gosh! I have. I wish I. If I was yeah, to turn you. the camera around, you would see my house is halfway packed up. Um, my kids just said, "Create a schedule so we know what to come in and do." Um, I'm serious. I am out of here. <laughs> oh, question for you, Shelly: Are you shipping your stuff over? No, no, no. It. I don't. I like, I want to really immerse as much as I can. And so okay. I'd rather just get furnishings there. Now, I am boxing up some of my, um, you know, personal items, some, you know, things that I really would like to have around me for comfort, uh, pictures right. and, and uh, just little knick-knacky kind of things. But I think what I'm going to do is uh, right. just pack them in four oversized suitcases and as my friends or family come to visit me, I'm just going to have each one of them bring a suitcase. Mm-hmm. That's sharp. Okay. Because I sense. think, you know, trying to, I think for me, trying to sell a house, sell, get out rid of everything that's in it, and plan my trip, um, and do things, you know, financial things, that's, it's just so much until I don't want to try to figure out shipping items. Um, right. You know, and especially since I don't have a new car. I have my car. And the only thing I would ship if I could would be my car. And it's a 1998 Ford Escort. And they ain't going to let me ship that. <laughs> mm-hmm. It probably wouldn't make the voyage. <laughs> Not if you drive it there. <laughs> Dude, my car could make it, believe me. But um, since I'm not shipping anything of that, you know, value, Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm just going to get rid of things um, and, and purchase when I get there. Mm-hmm. That's that's part of that. Now that'll be part of my celebration. <laughs> there you go. That's celebrating. Yeah, because and there's so many artisans over there. I mean, every not every corner, but every place you look, you can see where there are carpenters who are carving and building some of the most beautiful furniture, and to be able to buy that. And right. Actually, pay someone. Important. Uh, it will just be so exciting for me. So mm-hmm. that's, that's my goal. That's, that's my goal. all right there. Yeah, and yeah. plus that I don't want to go to the expense of storage until the, my place is built. Right. Um, so yeah, it's those kinds of cost concerns. You know, you could get yourself into you know five ten thousand dollars worth of storage. Well, shoot, that's a that's a hut. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, you hit it in the head. That's a project on the on in the in the community. Um, right. So, yeah, I'm I'm being yeah I'm being a little frugal that way. I, yeah, right. my daughter, I I was saying I would get a storage unit by the airport for my suitcases, and uh, she's going to make space. She goes, no, I think we can make space, and da da da, and we'll see. I kind of like having control over my stuff, so if I know where it is and experiences, they flood and all that, but neither here nor there. Um, I'm trying to look at the most cost-effective way 
to move. And for me, that's getting rid of what I have and repurchasing when I get there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And once again, just for the heck of it, anybody else out there want to say something? Caller, are you still there? Yeah, um, so family, uh, what we're going to do is close in a minute. Uh, no one has any more questions and things like that, and then we just uh, keep in touch on everything. So that's uh, what we got for you. And I hope to meet, meet the rest of you at that uh, private meeting we're having next week. For those who are in the group and for those who want to join the group, uh, you have to fill out all the paperwork submitted and um, then we have to just dialogue and then we'll add you to the group and then you can just organize yourself to uh, make your payments off your land and that officially connects you into the group. So family, uh, that's the uh, process uh, that's uh, right there and getting started. Okay, are there any questions for any of us? Our comments are tonight, so we're going to shut this down in a sec. Good night, right. everybody. Good night. Thank you for, thank you for contributing. Thank you, thank you. All right, cool. So appreciate y'all. So, family, I am ending the call. Let me see if there's a last question. No, that's it. That's it. All right, uh, so call.